Good morning. Yes, it is Tuesday morning and you're with George at Growth Point, growing as you are going. And we are speaking much about the Ascension as we are leading up to Thursday, the Ascension Day service that will be held here at the Open Door West Point Church at 10 o'clock where I will be ministering the word live. So come along and join us. But today we are speaking, what came down, restored broken fellowship. What came down? Jesus came down to restore that broken fellowship. That what the enemy enemy broke, Jesus came to restore. Man, what a joy of knowing this is what Jesus Christ did. He restored our relationship with the Father. Notice our quote. Our quote. Let me, let, let me uh, read the quote again for this week. Because he has ascended, we have an advocate with the Father who never stops interceding for us. Notice that there again. This is what Jesus Christ came to do. He came to restore fellowship. Now he is the one who stands before the Father on your behalf every single second of the day, interceding for you, no matter what you are going through in life here on earth. <laughs> Jesus stands there in heaven on your behalf. Now again, Jesus restored man. That which Adam broke, he restored. That which the blood of animals could not restore, he restored with his blood. You see, the sin was so great that it would take a blood of a human to restore that which was broken by Adam. Now, we know that Jesus became the second Adam. <laughs> yeah, God stepped out of heaven. Whoa, we, 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 we kind of still uh, uh, shake when, when I think of that. My mind gets a little bit foggy when I think, man, could he? God step out of heaven. Yes, he did. He stepped out of heaven on your behalf to become a man, to die like a man. Yes, feel every pain that he felt. He felt it because he was like you and I. Yes, he bled just like you and I. He was a man. Yes, fully man, yet fully God. Now, uh, again, uh, we, we won't try and debate that. But, but again, I, I believe that. And this is what I understand. This is what I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ was fully man, yet fully God. Yet he felt the pain of, of what you and I would feel. He felt everything that was laid upon him. He took that sin of humanity upon himself because he was the only one that could restore us back to the Father. That which Adam gave away Jesus came and took back from the serpent, again, back from the devil, back from that which Satan robbed from us and gave it back to us. Now we have access into the throne room of God through that which Jesus Christ accomplished upon the cross. You see, Moses, in his attempt to restore man back to God, came down with Ten Commandments. Yet the Ten Commandments could not bring us into the presence of God. Yet it revealed to us just how desperate we were in need of a man to restore us. D desperate need of somebody to fulfill that which we could not fulfill. The Ten Commandments was there to help us back to God, but it could not bring us into the presence of God because somewhere along the line, we would break one of those commandments. The entire commandments would be broken, would be rendered useless to us. Yet again, it revealed to us just how much we needed God to intervene on our behalf. You see, God is God, and he knew that the law could not do the work, but revealed to man just how broken man had become. Yeah, that's what the law revealed. It revealed how broken we were. Now, again, let me just say, Jesus came not to destroy the Lord, law, but to fulfill the law, and the law has been fulfilled in him. <laughs> Notice that. That is why it's, again, grace. Grace comes into play. When I accept the Lord Jesus Christ, I walk in his authority, knowing that which he accomplished upon the cross of Calvary, that which I could not do, he did, on my behalf. So, if you think man was so broken then, <laughs> come on, just look at man today. Just look at how broken man is. Just look how broken man has become. It's crazy to see how sin is infiltrating into 
all parts of our lives, on every level of our lives. We see it creeping in and taking over. It's like this uh, uh, disease that all of a sudden has been let loose, just like the coronavirus, just been let loose. And we see how men and women are falling under the deception of the enemy. You say, Pastor, how do you say these things? Well, listen to 2 Timothy 4. From verse 3 to 4. Listen to what it says. Listen to what Timothy writes. He says, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to the sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth. Now remember this, Paul writing to Timothy, again revealing to him, this is what he's saying to Timothy, hearing Timothy, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. People don't want to hear the teaching of the Word of God. Yeah. Instead, they want their ears to be itched. Not so. They want to hear good stuff. They want to have these uh, feel-good meetings where I can feel good when I leave. Yes, it's so important too. But you know what? It goes a little deeper because sin is infiltrating into our lives. We need to know how to deal with sin. What am I saying? I'm saying be careful of wolves that have put on sheep clothes to bring you into a place of deception. If preachers are not preaching about repentance, about hell, about sin, then I want to tell you, it's time to run. We've got to get back to the truth of the Word of God.